look at this Rolling Stone cover and look at how free speech is being used by some in the media. And maybe this is what they're objecting to. Here's a picture of Zokar Zarnayev. And look at how he's identified, not as the alleged bomber, not as the suspect, but as the bomber. <clears throat> is that what people are objecting to? Are people saying that we shouldn't have free speech because of the way the mainstream media is distorting the truth? No, actually, that's not what they object to. This is what they object to. Rolling Stone's controversial Zokar Zarnayev cover ignites heated debate, says The Guardian. Why? Because it portrays him in too glamorous a light. They object to the fact that the picture of him looks too good. You see, this is the discussion that's going on in America now. And this chain store, CVS uh, drugstore, has said they're not going to cover, they're not going to allow that uh, Rolling Stone magazine issue in their uh, stores because of the cover. So everybody, because of the mainstream media, has already decided that Zokar Zarnayev is guilty, even though he hasn't even had a trial. And even though we have some interesting reports from his first appearance in court. Now, of course, there's no photographs allowed of people who show up in court. We have people saying he didn't act like himself. He didn't really look like himself. He had uh, wounds that were still from the initial uh, arrest, perhaps. Of course, they could still be beating him. He could be under drugs, so maybe he's not acting normally. Maybe that has altered uh, the way he looks to former friends and colleagues, uh, students that he went uh, to school with. But most interesting is that a Boston reporter, Boston Herald reporter, reported that he said that he, re that he uh, made his statement with a very heavy accent. And as a report showed, home movies of Zokar Sarnayev show that he has no accent when he speaks English. So there's a lot of stuff that's fishy about this whole Boston bombing. As InfoWars has been pointing out from day one, we believe it's a false flag. We believe these people are patsies who have been set up. And yet they have been tried and convicted in the media, so much so that it's created a stir because there's a, an attractive uh, uh, photograph of him on the cover of a magazine, and we have retail chains refusing to carry it. Now, we also have some uh, other examples of tyranny. This is a little bit different. This is actually not government tyranny, but something that we see when Google has a monopoly. You know, we covered this quite some time ago that one of our Operation Paul Revere entries, George Washington's Revenge, which had over a half a million views, was suddenly taken down by Google without an explanation. And it wasn't just that that video was taken down. Uh, off the Hook, the people who, Off the Hook TV, the people who set this up is uh, Telly Blackwood actually had his entire YouTube channel, his business, flushed down the memory hole because of this action. He had no legal strikes, no copyright strikes against him whatsoever on YouTube. And they took down the entire channel without warning, without explanation, even terminated his Gmail accounts. And he has told us as he's investigating this, he's learned that up to 60 reposts of that video on YouTube have continued to be taken down. All they said was that there was a legal issue with his site, not saying exactly what it was or where it was coming from, kind of like the FISA court. But uh, Google took down his entire channel and they're taking down every posting of that video, even though it's a very short comedy satire. There's no copyrighted material in it, nothing that's really offensive. He's making a little bit of fun of Michael Moore and Piers Morgan. Michael Moore took some exception to that. But that's the power that Google has. Those are the people who are working hand in glove with the NSA and the surveillance state. Now, another article from Nat uh, Natural News, nano-sized aluminum is being sprayed in the atmosphere, causing degenerative disease, says a neurosurgeon. This broke over the weekend. In attempts to reflect sunlight away from the Earth and cool climate temperatures, this science experiment has exploited populations of people to mass amounts of airborne metals that are literally raining down and poisoning everyone, slowly and subtly. According to neurosurgeon Russell Blaylock, the nano-sized aluminum particles found in chemtrails are contributing heavily to de degenerative disease today. And as the reality of geoengineering takes hold, and as the consequences mount, it's never too late to stop the madness and work together for real grassroots environmental conservation. Now, <clears throat> we have another Operation Paul Revere entry. 
that focused on this very issue on chemtrails or as some people like to call them persistent contrails because they are in fact persistent contrails a lot of people have a knee-jerk reaction to chemtrails it's kinda like calling something a conspiracy theory and they are in fact persistent contrails and you can see them laid down in a grid pattern it's something that Russell Blaylock the nano sized aluminum particles found in chemtrails are contributing heavily to de degenerative disease today and as the reality of geoengineering takes hold and as the consequences mount it's never too late to stop the madness and work together for real grassroots environmental conservation now <clears throat> we have another operation Paul Revere entry that focused on this very issue on chemtrails or as some people like to call them persistent contrails because they are in fact persistent contrails a lot of people have a knee-jerk reaction to chemtrails it's kinda like calling something a conspiracy theory and they are in fact persistent contrails and you can see them laid down in a grid pattern it's something that back in North Carolina I never saw but we see it all the time out here in Texas and Austin so it seems to have uh, certain areas where the government is doing this and other areas where they're not doing it. But we can measure the effect of aluminum and we can see the effect on people's health, but we can see the aluminum in the soil. And this, uh, we have a Paul Revere entry called Look Up, which is actually a documentary. And he documents these uh, persistent contrails or these chemtrails. And he also created an app called the Skyder app. The Skyder app allows you to take pictures of the sky when this happens and send it to your congressman, you know, exercising your First Amendment rights to petition the government. So this is a great way for citizens to take action, to get involved in a grassroots environmental operation. And from what we understand, we've interviewed uh, the creator on the nightly news before. From what we understand, this app will be extensible to other issues as well. So we look forward to seeing what's going to happen with that. Now you can watch the InfoWars Nightly News streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.